Okay, then I get to introduce um, the one and only Amy Lafitte, who is going to take us into building your list. And again, this is not um, like literally grab a pen and paper. Here we go. Hey guys, I'm so excited to talk about list building. Um, let me first tell you that I got to be with Kim Wee this week. So I'm so excited about that. And I actually have her list building strategies and numbers. Y'all want those? I would like some, some, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mindy, for all of the excitement on that. Okay. That's what I was looking for. Okay. So Kim Wee, when she said, I'm going to do this business, um, these are her stats. So the first thing she did is she made a list of 500 to 600 people. Now, if you're new, just hang with me, okay? <laughs> but I want to give you guys this. You can always make it look what you want it to be. Okay, made a list of 500 to 600 people. Second thing she did is she called all of them. I was like, oh. <laughs> the third thing that came out of that is 80 people from all of them joined in the first six months. Out of those 80 people, 20 worked. Out of those 26 really worked. And that ultimately led to overrides of 150 countries and territories. And you know what? We always talk about mindset. You know what her mindset was when she was doing this whole thing? She said, I didn't need everyone to say yes. Because you don't, right? Those numbers are great. <laughs> so as you're looking at your list building, and most of you guys are not brand new. So some of you already have lists and those lists are great. So if you want to do a Kim Wee one and grab your list and add to the list and have your 500 list and be like, let's go. Okay, awesome. But also I want you to know just in your, in your um, business that list building is a skill. So this is something that even if you feel like, oh, I'm not good at this, like you can become good at this. Okay, so a um, couple steps I wanna give you guys on how to kind of like put together a list or add to your list. The first thing is, is write down everyone you know. This is people you love. This is your best friend. These are people, <laughs> I even heard Eric Corey say, Write down the people you hate. I don't really hate anybody. I think that's a strong word, but <laughs> I like that. He's like, write down everyone, 18 to 98, every age, even the people that said they're not going to do network marketing. So here's the reason why. If you don't write a list and if you're like, oh, I have it in my head. How many of y'all have had a brand new person say to you, oh, I have it in my head. And you're like, oh, I already know how this is going to go. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we all do that. I mean, I went to my first party and I was like, when I was thinking about um, joining the business, I was like, do I have somebody that might say yes to me? And I remember thinking, well, my mom uses the product, so she'll say yes. So I can't fail. Okay. I will join the business. Okay. So I think all of us on the front end have a very, very short list of three to five people that if they said yes, it would change our life. But even if all those people joined very quickly, we're going to need a bigger list. Um, so, but what happens when you take everybody and put them on the list is it allows your brain to start thinking of other people that you hadn't thought of. So it's going to all of a sudden bring you new people. So step one is write everyone down. And if you have not done this, you can Google memory joggers and it will pull up all sorts of different people. But just think logically, it's your family, it's your friends, it's your past coworkers, it's people you went to elementary, junior high and high school with, right? It's your old neighbors, it's your current neighbors, um, everybody that you have in all those different categories. It's your ex-boyfriend's mom that you really vibed with. I don't know if y'all any had any of those, but like I had some ex-boyfriend's moms that I was like, they were just the coolest women. Um, okay, so step two, six degrees of separation. So now that you have your contacts, especially the ones you know really well, who do they know? So I think of like my cousin. My cousin has her best friend. She has her coworkers. She has her neighbors. And I know a lot of those people. So you can start writing down those people as well where you have the circles of the people, your six degrees of separation from your specific list. So that's step two. Step three is where you're constantly expanding your list. And this is where it becomes truly a skill. Um, if you think about this, like 
I started this industry in 2005. I did not know any of y'all in 2005. <laughs> Even if you guys go back to 2005, there's lots of new people in your life, right? So you're naturally already doing this. Sometimes though, it's just not taking all of the new people that you're meeting and actually strategically putting them on a list or starting to have some sort of way to have communication with them, you know, adding them. Like for me, I'll be honest with you, if I meet a new person and I vibe with them, regardless if I think I'm going to do business business with them in this day and age, I add them on social media just because it's a really easy way for me to connect with them, to, to, you know, build a later connection with them. So in the past, like before that I would meet cool people and I didn't, I didn't get their number. I wish I was like, that was so cool. Wish I would have seen them again. Has that ever happened? Any of y'all? <laughs> yeah. So so just be strategic and make sure you're putting them on your list. Um, I always hear a lot of like two a day. And I used to, back in the day when we didn't have social media, two a day meant you went out and like met people in your grocery store. <laughs> but now it's not that weird because two a day could be you adding some new friends on Facebook. It could be you starting some new conversations. It could be you, you know, like having a great conversation with somebody in like some sort of group and adding them and friending them and then putting them on your list. Like, hey, that's somebody I want to talk to later. Number four is you can network on purpose. And Trisha and I are going to talk a little bit about that in a while. So I don't want to get into that. Um, but there are, you know, going out and meeting people is fantastic. Number five um, and six, these are just some things like if you're like, I don't have much of a list or I would like to refresh my list, go back to your most recent post and pull from the likes and comments. You probably had a great Christmas post where you posted your family photo and those people all love you. I'll, if you don't have one like that and you're like, Amy, I don't know, like my, my Facebook has been crickets or whatever, then upload a new profile picture. I love that because everyone who likes and comments, guess what? They like you. <laughs> Because they liked your photo, they commented on your photo, how pretty it was, or how, you know, how much fun that looked or whatever. So, but most importantly, just write down a list. So those are all a couple of just really quick strategies. We're trying to keep this quick. So um, let me, I forgot to look on the agenda. Cool. So next I'm going to um, talk with Trisha and actually we're going to talk about networking in person. So Trisha, I'm going to let you go ahead and start first. Trisha does a lot of networking in person. Yeah, absolutely. You guys, thank you. Um, I'm excited to be here and to share this with you. I, first of all, don't want to freak anybody out. Okay. So when you are looking at what am I going to do for adding to my list, everyone is different. So here's where, if you're interested in networking in person, this is how you know if it's for you. You like talking to people face to face, okay? You like getting up and talking to a group of people. And by I mean by a group of people, I mean that could be five people, it could be 20 people, it could be 40 people. And again, not to freak you out, but I want you to be prepared for what you might be getting yourself into if you go to in-person networking meetings. So you can find networking meetings anywhere. Um, I think Amy's gonna talk a little bit more about that, but you can find them on Facebook. You can find them on Meetup. You can find them um, through your Chamber of Commerce. Like there is a lot of ways to get out of your house and physically go to meetings, breakfast meetings, lunch meetings, dinner meetings, all sorts of activities or all sorts of types of meetings. Generally, when you're going to one of these, um, it, I like to think of it, it's a little bit like dating, right? You're not going to vibe with every group, just like you did not marry everyone you went on a date with. So you need to go with an open mind, like I'm just getting to know them. I'm getting to know this group. I'm getting to know their vibe. This is not about I'm going to have a bunch of people to sell to. Like that's not how it works, okay? So you're going to try out different groups until you find your people. I went to a lot of networking uh, groups that were like, hey, here's my business card. I'm a realtor. Why don't you come buy from me? And I was like, well, you're not my people. That's not the vibe I want to be around. So the groups that I participate in are groups that are looking to lift you up. They want to partner with you. They want to get to know who you are. Um, that's really what in-person networking is all about. It's about making connections. At a meeting, at a group that you go to, you're probably going to be asked to stand up 
and at the very least, give a 30 second little spiel about who you are. Now, this is a little bit more, you wanna think about it as if this is the only time anyone ever gets to know a little bit about me, I want them to know who I am, who I work with and how I help people. I don't wanna talk about like, I don't get up and say, I sell products for three and they're amazing. No, it's more about giving them a little snippet. Who are you? What do you stand for? Um, you wanna create like a little bit of curiosity because the whole idea is then they want to get your number. They might wanna have coffee with you. Like I said, it's about connection. So a lot of those connections are meeting up later on for a one-on-one -on -one conversation. It might be about Zoom or on Zoom, it might be a lunch or a dinner or coffee. But again, it's not about giving them a pitch. Whether you're uh, building your list and networking online or in person, it still goes back to people are going to do business with who they like, know, and trust. So when you're getting together at these meetings, you wanna keep that in mind. I'm looking for people that I know and that I like and that I trust. I want them to like, know, and trust me. So it's about relationships. Don't get weird. There's nothing weird about it. Handing out your business card and shoving something like that, or sometimes even bringing a sample to a meeting, it just starts to feel a little bit weird, right? So you want to think about like, how do I get to know this person? How do I build a relationship with this person? Um, and I like to think about it too. You know a lot of realtors and you know exactly who you would pair up with the right realtor, right? Like your, your crazy cousin who's going to be all skeptical and questioning, you're not going to give them to the sweetest, nicest, kindest realtor you know. You might have to give them to like, you might be passing that on to the right personality. So in that room, probably going to be other people involved in health. That's okay. That's okay. Because everyone does it differently and no one is you. No one does what you do. Okay. Even if they sell some kind of products, even if they're involved with some type of wellness company, they are not you. So you're going to these events to help people get to know who you are, not necessarily what your products are. And you're planting seeds. It's all about planting seeds. Um, but again, it is all about the connections. And usually when you're meeting people in person, it's going to lead to more connections. And so I'm actually going to hand it back to Amy because she's really good at talking about what that actually means, making that future connection um, and kind of playing that long game with the people that you're meeting. So Amy, go ahead, take it away. Thanks, Trisha. Yeah, um, I think she, Trisha actually is a really great example of playing the long game and how she um, approaches networking. It's fantastic. And um, Shana, if you're able to spotlight me, that'd be great. Um, and if not, find me. <laughs> there we go. Um, so the thing I actually wanted to share with you guys about with um, networking is something called referral partners. And I didn't know this for several years, and this really made a big difference. Um, so when you're out meeting everybody, um, if you, I will say this, if you have like just energy with somebody and you vibe with them, like I actually met Chase at a networking event and I'm, I, I was like eating out of her energy. I'm like, this girl's amazing. I have to have her in my life. So it didn't matter that she was in a moving box company and I didn't necessarily have referrals for her. I was for sure talking to that girl. Um, but outside of that with referral partners, this is really great. So this is where you're thinking of people that you could refer business to and they could refer business back to you. I always wondered why realtors were like, like BFS with their title company and their lenders. And then I realized, oh, because they refer business to each other like multiple times a day. So of course it's like a symbiotic relationship. Okay. So we're looking for that here in the health and wellness space, right? So off the top of my head yesterday, I was thinking like, you've got your natural doctors, you've got your chiropractors, you've got your massage therapists, you've got personal trainers, you've got nutritionists. You Even I have a personal stylist that's coming over to my house tomorrow and I just love her. I think she's amazing. And so I'm going to be talking to her about my health and wellness business because what happens when people are working on their closets? 
Sometimes it's because they had a health change, they need a health change, they want to make a change, right? And so I'm going to be having that conversation of how I we can refer business to each other. Hairdressers even. Honestly, a lot of those people, if you've ever had like somebody put on your list, like those nurses and people like that, and you're like, ooh, if they joined, like, you know, how sometimes we get a little too over the top. If they joined, like my whole business would change. Yeah, like, well, if you see that same kind of person out in networking, not only could you potentially end up talking to them about three and they could potentially be a really great referral partner. But even if they aren't like, even if they don't actually join three, couldn't they, y'all can do a lot of business back and forth and refer each other. So that is something that is a really cool thing to look at for networking. And then where do you find networking groups? Um, three areas that I think are really awesome. The first is you can go into Facebook events, events near me. You can put in, you know, business networking, social networking, and you'll see all sorts of different things. Um, also, I think Eventbrite, is that where we buy our tickets sometimes? Eventbrite has a ton of different ones as well. Thank you, Lindy, for shaking your head. Yes. So Eventbrite is another one where you can put in your, your area code and even put in like health and wellness. Maybe you want to go to a health and wellness seminar, right? Um, so that's another one. And then um, Meetup is one of my favorites. So that's an app. You download Meetup. Um, and if you're, if you live in a really small town, you may not, you may have to like kind of expand your radius or whatever. Um, but if you're in a town like Dallas, you're going to ha be, you know, have a million options available for you. Um, and last but not least is LinkedIn. Now LinkedIn would be a little bit more virtual in a lot of those situations, but I've now learned um, that it has one of the SEOs on the, one of the best SEOs on the internet. So you can put in all sorts of different things. Like you could put, you know how we're in Indonesia. You could put women entrepreneurs in Indonesia. Guess what? It's going to pop them. Like there's going to be groups in there that you can um, add. SEO is just like um, Googleable, searchable, like makes it easier to find different things. Um, and then if you're in a smaller town and you're like, Amy, I don't know if I have any of those, guess what? Every little town has a chamber of commerce. So you could definitely go to the meetings, join if you want. Um, again, just like what, um, Trisha said, you don't have to, like, you can go to meetings without joining. So you can, tr you, they'll let you, a lot of them let you come for a certain amount of times. And if you want, just go make a whole bunch of friends, friend them up on Facebook, and then like start your thing that way. If you don't necessarily like love the vibe of the meeting. Right. So um, but anyway, those are all some different ways you can network in person. And now we're going to turn it over to Lindy and Lauren, and they're going to talk a lot more on social media and how to um, build your list through social media. So Lindy, you'll have to unmute and take it away. Hey guys. Okay. I think I'm going to go first, right, Lauren? All right. Pinned up. So I'm going to be really fast. I promise we will give you all the notes and things I already dropped a little checklist into our leaders chat so they can disseminate it into the group. So don't worry if you miss something because I'm going to go as fast as humanly possible to be respectful of your time. So we're going to talk about networking on social media. And then Lauren's going to jump on with me at the end to talk about groups because it is one of the best ways to meet people without having to leave your house because that's not always the option, right? Especially if you only have a certain amount of time or you got kids or whatever reason that you can't always get to an in-person place. So I like the way that Jesse Lee always talked about networking and social media and doing fit. So Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Personally, I picked two because sometimes ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> like, it's a lot to do social media. So if you can do one, do one. Um, but Facebook and Instagram, in my opinion, are the best for creating connections in well-rounded. But if you're like Mindy, who has a ton of followers on TikTok, all of these strategies work. You just tweak it for the platform. So the first step is number one, when networking on purpose on social media is you have to create content. And let me dispel any thoughts that pop in your head about I'm not a creator because you are you are gifted by the creator to be a creator yourself so you have a unique story a unique thing you are you and there's no one else like you so we always talk about five to ten things about you if you don't know what those things are do a little three drop it on your on your Facebook or your Instagram and say hey what are three things that pop in your head when you think about me these are great ways to know what your people are and what your brand is and what you should go with so creating content engaging entertaining educational and inspiring 
There is enough Debbie Downers on the internet. Don't be one of them, right? So make content that you like. The best way I can tell you to get inspiration is go follow people that you like. If you're not already following a lot of the leaders here, Trisha has amazing content. Amy, Lauren, Cassie, Shanna, like all of us have phenomenal content. Go love it and repurpose it for your own, your own purposes. So create before consuming. This should go without telling before you get stuck in a scroll hole. You better be cons a, a creator before a consumer. Quantity. This is usually the number one question that we get when we talk about creating. How much should I do? Minimum, one thing a day. That's it. One thing a day. One post a day, one story a day, one reel a day. One thing a day is the minimum. The goal, if you're going to be very successful on social media, is you have to put a lot out there to see what sticks. This is one time where the spaghetti analogy actually does work. So goal is one post on all platforms, five to 10 stories, one to two reels a day. If you're not there yet, one thing a day. Now reminders, video is greater than static. So if you can do a video on your story versus a picture, it's always going to work out better. Always include a picture on your Facebooks or your posts. Repurpose content. Guys, use the same content across platforms, change it up a bit, and use stuff that you created in the past. I love repurposing my memories because I've already wrote it. I might as well rewrite it and use it again. Second, engagement is key. Engage content is queen and engagement is king. Okay. Every like is a lead. How many of you guys drop it in the chat? Really want people coming to you, dropping in D your DMs. Like, what do you do? Tell me more. How do I get this? This is where you get it. If you're not getting likes and comments on your post, engagement is a problem for you. So if you're getting less than 10% of your people, so if I have 7,000 followers, I should expect 70 ish people liking and following and, and constantly on my stuff. If that's not happening on your post, engagement is a problem. So here's, uh, especially if they're not business related, right? Your business related ones are going to get less engagement than your regular ones. That's why you should only do one or two straight up business things a week. One or two, that's it. And if you're only doing one content a week, it better not be straight business. You can trickle in your business in a way that is very like incognito. Go look at some of the leaders posts so that you can see how that actually works. Okay, number one, you're gonna engage with your people on your stuff. Every like is a lead, every comment is a big lead. So respond to all comments. Go message people with specific comments. If they are commenting more than one sentence, that is time out of their day they're taking on your stuff. You better be engaging with them. They are the hot leads, okay? Now to engage with your friends on their stuff. Nobody likes somebody that just takes. You gotta give, okay? So you're going to go give your time. I, and I'm gonna give you some homework later to how to do this. But comment on their post, react to their post, do the clam, comment, like, add message, okay? I'm gonna comment, I'm gonna like their stuff. I'm gonna add them if they're not already my friend. I'm gonna message them. This is the standard of how we're going to create meaningful relationships online. Use your scroll for engagement. I personally set a 15 minute timer and I scroll for fun with the intention of interacting and engaging. Okay, number three, find new people. This is what we're talking about, networking, right? You're gonna add three to five suggested friends. Facebook makes this really easy. Instagram makes this really easy. They tell you who they suggest. If you have mutual friends and they don't look like a creeper, add them, message them. They're your people, okay? They know people that you know. Six degrees of separation. Start three to five conversations every day with new people. A uh, easy way to do this is go, go through your stories, go through your reels, things like that. Search specific hashtags and topics to find people that match your brand. I'm a nurse. I might go search nurse and go find other nurses, right? Just by simply looking for other posts and interact with three to five relevant posts and creators. How many of you guys would love to sign up a already Instagram creator? The way you find them is you search for them. Make a connection. This is super simple, but we forget to do it because it's online. All right. This is your homework part. We're going to start daily conversations. Set a timer for 10 minutes and you should send out something that we call like a green light script or a story script. And I'm going to drop these in the group so that you get them. Okay, so don't worry. You don't have to remember these verbatim. A green light is when you're on your messenger 
and the light beside the person, the little button is green. It indicates they're online. So it's easier to start a conversation with somebody that's actually there, right? Like you knock, they're not home, it's harder. So this is a green light script. You can do this through Messenger and you can just scroll through the people. You can do this on Instagram. It's really simple. Hey, so-and-so, I saw you peeping on my post. I just wanted to check and see. Oh, I'm reading the wrong script. Scratch that, wrong script. Got too far ahead. Hey, happy Monday. I'm super excited to reach out to you. I, I've been following you for a while. How are you doing? Hey, happy Sunday. I just wanted to stop by and let you know if no one else has told you today, you're awesome. I hope I hope you have a great weekend. Anything fun planned? These are just connecting like things. You don't have to make it sound like this. You can change it up. And I like this one because I, there's a lot of people that follow me that I don't even know how they found me. Hey, I'm not even 100% sure how we connected, but welcome to my world. And I'd love to know a little bit about you. Who are you? How are you? What do you do? Tell me all the things. Okay. That's the green light script. Send it to as many people as possible in a 10, 15 minute period. Stories. This is another homework assignment. And you should do this kind of on the daily. If, if 10 minutes is too much, five minutes works, one minute works, right? Just find new people and engage with them. Set a timer. Send out a story script to as many people as viewed your stories yesterday. So you have to actually be doing content for this to work. So find a story that got a lot of people watching and go send them this script in 10 minutes, as many as you can. Hey, so-and-so, thanks so much. I saw you peeping all my stories. Are you just a cheerleader? Are you interested in learning more about what I'm doing, right? Hey, so-and-so, thanks so much for peeking at my stories. I really appreciate you. Are you just being a cheerleader? Are you, and with all the amazing support, are you interested in seeing what I'm up to doing these days, okay? Last homework. This is for posts, when you get a post that has good engagement, you should pick one post a week to really use to grow your business. It doesn't have to be your business one. Those people are already going to come to you or they're already, already going to comment. This should be whichever one gets good engagement, right? When I post something funny about the kids, it gets good engagement. Now I'm still going to go ask them about my business because they're already engaged. So set a timer, pick one post that works the best and send out this post script. And what it spe specifically says is, hey, so-and-so, thanks so much for the love on my post. Were you looking for more information on what is um, up to? Or are you just supporting? Hey, so-and-so, thanks so much for the love on my live or thanks for loving my reel. Are you curious about what I'm up to or are you just supporting? And it's okay if they say they're just supporting. That's good too. We love interaction no matter if they're supporting or they're interested, but you'll be shocked how many people are like, yeah, you know, I've been watching you for a while and I really don't know what you do. <laughs> so tell me more. So with that, that is uh, kind of your daily method of operations on social media. Don't let it overwhelm you. Start with one thing a day. Just do one thing a day. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Lauren and she's going to talk to you guys about groups, which is the GOAT when it comes to Facebook. All right, Lindy. I don't even know if we even need to talk more about social media because I'm pretty sure you just covered everything that there is to know about social media in that really short amount of time. Social media is a long game. Um, social media is just another tool. And so I want to reflect real back. Y'all y'all probably know my story, but I didn't use social media for the first three months of my business because I was terrified of what people would think about me. And so I just refused to post at all. I wanted my friends and family to know what I was doing and hear it from me before I actually went to social media. But I 100% believe in curiosity posts because I think you should get people interested and curious about what you're doing before you actually start spilling the beans on social media and start sharing stories and things like that. But um, social media is one of those tools that, like if you didn't use, it'd basically be the equivalent of like, let's just say Shanna started a flooring business, right? Because she owned a traditional flooring store. If she started a traditional business tomorrow, but never told a single person about it, would that be okay? Right? Okay. Using social media as a tool is the exact same thing. Like starting a business and getting involved in this business and not using social media would be detrimental. Okay. So use social media as another tool, but social media doesn't work without outreach. Okay. And so when I talk about, um, Lindy is very, very, very consistent. 
Like, I, I don't care if like Lindy is deathly ill on her deathbed. She is still going to post on social media. It is her gift for consistency is in the social media world because she is doing attraction marketing. She's causing people to come and reach out to her. My favorite thing to do is to get into groups. And so I have, have talked about this before um, where growing your network, especially especially if you're brand new, right? But especially if you've been in this in the long game for as long as me, you know, you know, six years, Amy's been in this even longer. Um, and so when you've been in this industry for this long, your warm market, your closest friends and family, they know what you do. They know what you do so, so much that like, if, if they want to be a part of what you do, it doesn't even take a conversation of you coming to them anymore. Like they will come to you. They're like, girl, I've been watching you for six years. I know what the heck you do. I'm not, you know, no, no worry about putting me on your list. Right. And so you have to go out and grow your network. So how do you do that? How do you grow your network? It is very hard to be successful in this business. If you are a hermit crab who has been living under a rock for the past 10 years, you have to go get, do what Trisha said go to networking events, go to meet people. But here we are in a time where social media, Zoom and things like that is really is really a gift because you never have to leave your house. You can network with people without even having to go out and, and leave your home. And so how do you do that? I've talked about this before where I want you to make a list. And I am dead serious when I say this works. So like like Lindy just said earlier with giving you guys homework and kind of working through some of these things, one of the homework assignments that you should have is should be writing a list of all your amazing qualities. Write a list of all your hobbies. Write a list about facts about you. Write a list about um, interesting things. Like, like, for example, I keep using Lindy as a reference because I'm doing this with her, but like she is very into like what's happening in the world. She is fun of useless but interesting facts, okay? And she knows everything there is to know about the news. And I'm sure she is in a ton of groups where she is meeting new people that are just like her, right? The ideal prospect is somebody that is just like you. So what are your qualities? For me, I mean, obviously, I love home decorating. I love cookie baking. I love all these things where I have gone. I used to be an avid couponer. And so I met tons of people in couponing groups. And I did exactly what Lindy said. I'm not making posts in the groups and I'm not going and trying to prospect. I'm just growing my network. I am just meeting people so that I can continually drip information. So if you're an empty nester, if you love gardening, if you, I want you to dig deep. Okay, I'm deaf in my left ear. There is a group for people who are deaf in their left ear. I swear to you. My daughter has an uncombable hair syndrome. There, there's a group for uncombable hair syndrome. Guys, whatever there is a group for, I promise you can go find a group with people that have the same qualities as you and you can grow your network through those groups. And then all you have to do is just engage with them and then constantly drip information on them and then be consistent with your social media. If I can tell you anything about social media, it's just staying consistent because you, believe it or not, have loyal followers and supporters and friends that if you don't show up, will wonder what happened to you. That is probably the number one mistake I see with social media is people just not being consistent and not showing up. I'm not saying show up for your business every day and don't post about your business every day because that's kind of annoying. Like if I see somebody every day who's like, Oh, this about my business or that about my business. And they're posting like corporate graphics every single day. Like, you know, they're, they're, they're flyers with the PDFs of the ingredients and kind of stuff. And they're like, message me for this. You know, that is kind of overwhelming, but I'm just saying show up for the people who support you, give them life updates, be funny, be entertaining. Um, and Lindy did most of the work here. So that is all that I believe without being too overwhelming that you would need for social media. And I believe the next um, topic that we are going to talk about is with Katie Jo DeWald. Is she in the house today? Hey, you. Hey. All right. So Katie is amazing at business collaborations. And when I say business collaboration, she's going to talk to you through um, so many different aspects of, you know, she grew her business a lot in person when she first started. Um, she's partnered with businesses. She's, she's figured out ways to get her product, our product line 
uh, into the streets, right? We always say the most product out in the streets is the name of the game. Like you can win with getting product on the street. She's figured out a way to number one, go into businesses and talk with businesses. And she's also figured out a way where she can go and put her products and set them up on display. Um, Katie, can you tell us more about like, let's start real quick with when you host an event, when you host an in-person event, say I'm coming into Oklahoma and we're going to have an event. Can you tell us what you and your mom and some of the other girls have done leading up into the event to kind of get the word out and what y'all done? Yes. So um, we surprisingly have not hosted an event yet in our hometown or anywhere in our area. As you know, we have gone out to um, maybe some teammates in Tulsa or around Oklahoma City, Norman, but um, I don't want it to be a wasted trip. I want to support our team and be there for in-person. I love in-person events, but we go ahead. It might be a week. It might be two weeks before. And um, my mom and I, some several um, other people we've teamed up together. We like to go and knock on businesses. Um, we love hair salons, nail salons. You know, they, they love talking and we just try to reach people who aren't connections or aren't friends so that hopefully they they come and we normally go like I said a week before and then we follow up a couple days before the event and remind them because everyone's busy they might have not put it in their calendar and uh, we just want to try and reach as many people as we can and hope that they show up to your event. And what are you saying when you go into a new business? Are you just saying like, hey, we're having a, a wellness event or what are you doing? So um, I learned this from you. <laughs> so when I started, because, you know, I was a newbie, um, I went product based. What I have found is so many people are looking for extra income during this economy or, um, you know, just needing more in life. And so once I started trying to focus on the business side and really intrigue them that this is an awesome opportunity for and everyone needs to check it out, we saw numbers growing at our in-person events because everyone sells products. Everyone, you know, has supplements or a uh, cabinet full of bottles. But when you get people in the seats, we prove that our products are best and we prove that our business model is the best. And so I have seen better results by inviting people like, hey, I have a business opportunity that you really should take a look at. I feel like it could be successful in your salon or in your um, chiropractic business, things like that. Awesome. And so you are getting, when you walk into your salon, basically for a lack of a better word, you're finding out if people take supplements or nutrition, because your goal is if they're already taking supplements and nutrition, you can get them to switch to ours and they can also make an income by switching to ours and then referring people. Yes, that's correct. Um, okay. I don't go out of the gun. Like i first started like ours is best. They don't want to hear that. Um, but once we get them in a room and show them the absorption qualities and things like that, then normally you are going to see that they realize it and switch over to yours. And when you're meeting new people, when we go into a new town and we do a meeting, what's the number one thing you learned about getting contact information? Oh, I totally nailed this one at first. No. <laughs> My business card is the best you've ever seen. Uh, I have the PDR on one side and the ABC on the other side, but it doesn't really help when you just hand those out because then the ball is in their court. So I have found, especially um, when going to other um, areas that I don't live, um, especially waitresses, bartenders, wherever you're eating, um, shopping, you know, random people, you don't have their phone number, you have no way to get in contact with them. So you can invite them to your event. And they're for sure, especially if you're tipping, going to come to your event that night. But what happens when they don't show like, especially some of them that are likable, it hurts your feelings, and you have no way to follow up with them if you don't get their phone number. So I don't care if it's Facebook, I don't care if it's phone number, email, um, their pager, if they still have one of those. It's very important when you drop off your business card or when you invite to their 
to your event in that town that you get their contact information so that the next day you can follow up with them and say, hey, I really missed you last night. I was looking forward you know, to hanging out. Are you hearing more? And then they'll say, obviously, like, sorry, something came up. Well, then you can follow up with either a three-way or um, sending the intro video to three, and then it can get more conversations going. And you are the queen of that. I will tell y'all from watching Katie, when we set up events and she goes and rents out rooms, every hotel manager where we have done an event, Katie has gotten their contact information to share more about this business. Now, you've also been really successful with putting your products in certain types of businesses and setting up like a booth to display the products. Tell me more about that. How do you approach business owners and tell me what you have in your booth? So, um, this might be one of my proudest things because it's been one of the hardest things. Um, salons, you know, most of the time, uh, I don't know if they get kickbacks like doctors. I mean, I don't mean that rude, but, um, it's hard to get product into them. But, um, I have found when you're consistent and you just keep trying, it pays off in the end. So I have a couple of booths set up, like I like to call. It reminds me back in the day, like the JC Penny, like rent it area. Um, if you guys remember that time, my grandma loved putting her quilts in there, but, um, I have several that I pay a monthly booth rent and I have all six products on display. Um, I have the uh, like PDR. I have it framed nicely so that it looks, you know, presentable and explains each product. And then I also have a frame that has my Venmo or cash app uh, set up so that they can grab and pay right on the spot. And obviously when they Venmo, they put what they buy. And I just try to replenish that every couple of days. And I have found that I really like it because I'm reaching, I have so many new customers that I don't even know who they are. You know, like I've never met them, but they went into the salon. They were interested in the product. So it's allowing me to reach people that I don't even know. Yeah. And it's getting the people in the salon talking and they're talking like, I know specifically you guys are going to laugh, but kind of people in some of these towns know Purify as like the hangover product. <laughs> and so people around like the salons and the businesses are talking about like the products and people how are, and Katie said at one point she couldn't even keep Purify in stock because so many people were coming in and buying Purify from her. So not only is it a good opportunity to physically sell product and, and keep an inventory, um, but it's also getting people talking about the product around the salon. And then like her, her, you know, her contact information is there. Um, but I'll say another thing um, about, you know, getting your product set up in the salon. Guys, if you are going to do this, you need to make sure you have a secondary account under you where you would purchase your inventory. Okay. So, uh, not overbuying on your own account, but like, make sure that you're getting a commission from three on the company for whatever you're ordering to keep in these booths. So like, for example, Katie has an LLC, um, and so she orders her products to keep in these vendor spots um, and she orders her product under that and she's not just ordering it on her account. Um, any, any great golden information, Katie, about this. You have anything else you feel like would be valuable? Uh, I think that's all. All right, you killed it. Awesome job. I have one more thing I forgot. Okay, tell us. One of my favorite things when we're hosting in-person events is uh, testimonials. I feel like that really takes it up a notch. So I would encourage everyone to try, whether they're a teammate or a customer, whatever city you're going to, reach out to them ahead of time, especially if they have um, seen, you know, a lot of changes from these products. It just kind of, it pulls at your heartstrings. And um, that's my favorite part of in-person events is when they tell their story and how these products has changed their life. Yeah. And if you, so basically what you're saying is if you know, someone has a powerful testimony, even if they're a brand partner, ask them to come to the event, even if they don't have guests, like if they have free, get them to come and share their story at these events. Yes. Awesome. Okay. I believe that I am, we are going to turn this um, back over to the next speaker. Awesome. Okay. I'm going to pop in here and here's what I want you to do. Whose brain is on fire with like Oh my gosh, why didn't I think of this? Why didn't I think of that? Stop right here, brain dump it right now. 
timer's going on. You've got a few minutes. Go. Okay. Get it all out. Let those creative juices flow. Write it down. We'll give you like five minutes, actually four. Don't go to the bathroom. You don't need to go to the bathroom. You need to make your list. 